I wanted to start off with this unique post you had called Corporate Liaison, which, as I understand, was the liaison for David Miscavige to run orders through you into Church of Scientology International. Yeah, the corporate liaison, I was the corporate liaison in charge, and the, the office was set up as a way for David Miscavige at Author Services and other corporations to issue orders and to get things done within the Scientology Church, regardless of what corporate entity it was. So you were essentially David Miscavige's right-hand man? That's correct, yeah, I was his right-hand man, and I had an office that I set up for him to take care of any of his needs needs, both administratively, housekeeping-wise, but also, more importantly, in terms of getting things done at Golden Era Productions, which is part of the Church of Scientology International. He was chairman of the board ASI. That was a for-profit corporation selling sci-fi, is that correct? It was, uh, Author Services Incorporated was set up as a for-profit corporation for uh, making money for through selling books, tapes of Hubbard. Of Hubbard. Okay. That's correct. So the the head honcho, the COB, chairman of the board, auto services, should not really be running a church, which was crying out for tax tax exemption to the IRS. Correct? That's correct. Yes. So the underhand way of doing it was that David Miscavige did run the church, but implemented his orders to you, hence your title, Liaison. That's correct. I was set up as a liaison, which they could funnel or channel orders through me into the church. But everybody knew at the base that when David Miscavige spoke or when he issued an order, it, that it was to be obeyed and to be followed. It didn't matter about corporate structure. He would violate it left, right, and center. But the sort of facade that was set up was our office was set up as the sort of clearinghouse for all those different orders and things to be done. I laugh when I see declarations and when I see things in the court cases that are going on now where he says he has no control and does nothing in all these different corporations as the Pope of Scientology because I know that that's not true because I was there at the very beginning when it first started. Mark. Yes. Um, you directly experienced an attack of physical violence, assault and battery from David Miscavige, correct? That's correct, yes. Tell me about that. Yeah, basically, after several years of working as his right-hand man, I was basically got in trouble, which I go into more details at another time, but basically was put down doing heavy, hard labor. And I was working in the actual garage at the Golden Era property, up on a 30-foot high scissors lift, painting pipes when he came through on an executive inspection with his entourage of people that he was with. And he called up to me and he asked me, uh, Mark, he called me Fisher, he goes, Fisher, do you still want to leave the Sea the, the Organization? And I said, uh, yes sir, I do. And he goes, you do? And I said, yes. And he said, well, Scientology obviously hasn't worked for you, and that's why you're leaving. And I said, no, you don't understand why I'm leaving. I'm leaving for freedom. Okay, freedom to be who I want to be, choose what I want to do, say what I want to do, okay? And he said, ordered me, get down off of that scissors lift. Scissors, so I brought the scissors lift down. As soon as I stepped down on the ground, he came rushing across and grabbed me around the throat. And I, so I immediately went limp and dropped down to the ground. He started kicking and, and hitting me and, and pulling at my hair and just, just beating me for like, you know, several seconds. I don't know how long it was. And I didn't fight back. I just went limp and just covered up so that I, you know, tried not to get too hurt. He finally stopped. I stood up, I looked him right in the eye, and I said, you notice I didn't lay one finger on you. And the reason I did that is because I wanted everybody around him to see what a psychopath he was, and that this is the head of Scientology actually physically attacking me. And I said, that's not what I got involved in this group for. I reached behind my head, and I pulled out my hand, and it was covered with blood, and I said, you made my head bleed, and I looked at him. And at that point, he started to get real, real defensive. Like, oh, I did this for your own good, and I'm going to get the medical officer down here, and and uh, you know, I'm just, you know, we're just trying to set you right, and that type of thing. And then he scurried off like the little rat that he was.
Over the past few nights, we've been reporting on allegations of physical abuse inside the Church of Scientology. The allegations have been made by a number of former high-ranking Scientologists against the Church's leader, David Miscavige himself. Rathbun became the Inspector General, working for and reporting directly to David Miscavige. While Rathbun was there, he says Miscavige routinely assaulted church members. He treats his, his, his subordinates in all of international management like, um, like slaves in a slave camp and literally and beats them down. He jumped up on the conference room table, like with his feet right on the conference room table, launched himself across the table at me. I was standing, battered my face, and then shoved me down on the floor. Dave asked me a question, and I couldn't tell you what the question is today. I don't remember. But the next thing I knew, I'm being smacked in the face and knocked down on the ground in front of all these people. Mark, that's, a, that's quite a story. I just want to ask you, perhaps you can answer this question. I've had so many emails from people saying, why do people not fight back? Well, there's several reasons. Well, for me personally, there were several reasons. Number one, like I said, I wanted people to see that were around him that, that this is crazy. This is not the group that I got involved in. That was number one. But number two, he, he always travels with an entourage, and, and they would join in with him. It was like being like a gangbang at, assaulted. And there was no reason to fight back for that reason, you, because you would just get beat up even worse. Counseling of any sort is one-on-one -on -one with any kind of therapist. But in the Church of Scientology, it became, let's have a gang go against one person while they are holding the cans in a confessional. And this got dubbed as gang bang section. And Cole McLaughlin were sat on by five thugs. He's like over six foot. Five thugs subdued him. It, it, these are examples of always using a gang against one. And the mindset is, if we use a gang, the person will subdue faster. Mark, how long after you got the David Miscavige assault and battery, how long was it between this incident and your fabulous escape? I was less than three or four weeks. In three or four weeks? I, was, I decided at that point that things had gone off over the edge and that they weren't going to change. And as soon as I could get an opportunity to leave, I was going to do so.